Hey everybody, and welcome to a different kind of video on this channel. Uh, you can see in front of you that I've got both Jasp and Jamovi open. And uh, what I wanted to do in this video is compare the two. Um, one of the things that I've been seeing in creating the videos that I've made for Jasp on this channel, I'll link you the playlist here, um, is uh, between my colleagues and I, there's this um, should we do Jasp or should we do Jamovi question. And there's a lot of things that we can go over in this. Um, and this is this this video is not going to be comprehensive or exhaustive. Uh, I'm just going to note some of the things that I think are useful in comparing the two. I've got some broad categories for the for the video. You'll see those on title cards. I'll tr try my best to to make um, decent transitions. And I I hope that I have I've put this um, uh, in an organization that might help you determine what it is that you would like to have from your open source non SPSS or SAS uh, statistical package. So let's jump into it. OK, so these are the splash screens for both Jasp and Jamovi, right? So Jasp has a little welcome message for you and Jamovi gives you the spreadsheet ready to go with the little V and what version you're running. Both show the version you're running. I am currently running the latest builds and releases for both programs. So Jasp is 0 0.12.2 and Jamovi is version 1.2.19 and I have this one because I am running on a Mac as you can tell by the uh, the uh, buttons at the top here uh, and they suggest that this is the best for um, my Mac OS Catalina so that's why I'm running that so it, you may have a different version if you are on a, uh, a lower oh, Mac OS or on Windows or Linux or something else okay so the purpose of these two programs is to be free, open source, R-based alternatives for SPSS, which is owned by IBM, or SAS, which are two gigantic statistical programs, almost full featured, but not not totally. And um, the. I think from an educational standpoint, if you want to get your students to be doing uh, statistics at home on their own computers, then using these two rather than saying, OK, well, go and get a grad pack for these two programs, SPSS or SAS or something like that. Um, just no, go to jaspstats.org or jamovi.org. OK, so let's talk about form factor because these programs are pretty similar and um, so I've gone ahead and opened up the same data file in both of these they both can read .sav files from SPSS which I think is great uh, so this is an SAV file that I uh, used for experiments in grad school so what's the difference between the two well they both have GUI or GUI interfaces. And so that makes them extremely similar to SPSS or SAS. Regardless of any code that underlines them, which is which is R, as I as I mentioned, um, we get to see the spreadsheet apparatus for these two programs, which makes it similar to the industry leader and industry standard SPSS, right? And so many of the things that you are going to have your students do will likely be point and clicks, right? So I'm going to click on ANOVA or I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on ANOVA, right? So point and click is primarily the mode in each of these things, in each of these programs, right? Um, <laughs> now, one thing that I, I wanted to note is that um, they chose their color palettes 
uh, to be similar but different. So Jamovi's blue, and what you don't see here now is that Jasper's green, but you saw it on the splash page, of course, which I thought I would, uh, <laughs> which I thought I would ma make uh, a case so you can know very quickly which one you're looking at. Is it the blue and orange one, or is it the green and orange one? I don't know. So both have spreadsheet functionality, but I do want to point out that and I will explore this further in another section of this video, in a further section of this video, is that um, while they both have spreadsheet appearances and interfaces, the difference being is that Jamovi allows you to edit the data directly in the program, whereas Jasp requires a, a, a separate spreadsheet interface. So something like Excel, and you save it as a CSV file, comma separated value file, in order to make changes in JASP. So you cannot edit directly in there. Like I said, I'll go through that in a little bit more detail um, in another section. Um, and the other thing that I'll add is for the GUI is that there is uh, a, a similar thing with the tests at the top. So you have a hamburger menu for Jamovi that gives you the main sort of data working interface as well as the hamburger menu over here. OK, um, and then uh, in Jasp, you have a vertical three dots that gives you your options and preference interface. OK, and then here in the hamburger menu for Jasp, you have preferences. All preferences, generally speaking, are about the same. So what I want to say is before we get into preferences, I want to say that these interfaces are extremely similar, extremely similar. OK. So let's talk about those preferences for a second uh, before I talk about the spreadsheet in more detail. Um, Jamovi, you can change the zoom level if you want to get more information on your screen. I can make this smaller if you've got really good eyes you can make this smaller and bring it back up to 100 percent here um you can change the results format okay so you can get the um, numbers how many significant figures you'll get for each of them how many p-value decimal places you'll get for uh your p-values whether the references are visible i'll come back to syntax mode uh plot themes so you can have uh different themes which is going to change the color you can go to i love spss and change it to i heart spss um, or you can change it to dark i believe these change on restart okay so just be uh just be aware of that it's not going to change it you can change what values go into missings so uh, NA here is the default. You can then here also check for updates to Jamovi and then use the screen capture tool, which I am going to give a, sh which I am going to give a, a, a try in, in a, in a, uh, Jamovi tutorial series, which I plan to start, uh, soon by the end of the year and then developer mode. Okay. So let's then look at, uh, Jasps. Uh, it's very odd to say preferences here. So data, how to deal with data. OK, use default spreadsheet editor. That's what it looks like out there. Um, and as well as uh, making changes in, I'll say, uh, Excel, for example, synchronize automatically on data file save. So this is if you're making changes in Excel and uh, you want those changes to be reflected immediately in Jasp. All you have to do is hit save in your CSV file. And then you get to figure out uh, here if you want to use uh, what do you want to use for your missing value or you can add your own results similar to Jamovi here. I'll go ahead and open this so you can see um, you can display exact P values or a rounding. Uh, I have it ticked off for some reason. You can fix the number of decimal places. I'm a real fan of two um, just because beyond that it's for other, anything other than p values is i don't know kind of ridiculous a little too precise for my liking you can use uh the pp the the pixels per inch 
uh, of screen in plot. So how big the plots are. Uh, I set my custom PPI for 300 because that's a great number for uh, publishing. So though I do not recommend using uh, JAS plots for that. And then I'll talk about plots in uh, a later part of this video. And then you can change the image background. Definitely go with the transparent if you do end up using the plots from JASP in your research. Definitely make the uh, background transparent. Uh, it's just more more flexible. Yeah, sure, the, the background will likely be white because it'll be on a white uh, piece of paper, whether that's a Word document or a... Um, research publication, PDF, transparent's always the best. Um, interface, so again, I'm on I'm on Mac, and so I get the light and dark theme thing. thing. Um, so it's on light right now, even though I have dark theme uh, active on my desktop, uh, I can change it to dark and it will automatically update. However, I'm going to change it to back to light just to compare them. It's a little easier to read for this video. So I'm going to change it to light language and zoom level, safe graphics mode and native file dialogues, which is important. And then you can go to advance and you can go into developer mode just like uh, Jamovi can. And you can log uh, things and keystrokes into files, which will then um, save what you're doing. I think uh, th so as far as options go, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar. If uh, I would say that, hey, don't worry <laughs> about the two preferences should not make or preferences or options should not make or break <laughs> what choice you make on this one. OK, so let's talk about the spreadsheet function. Like I said, Jasp requires an additional spreadsheet function, okay, or spreadsheet program. And so that program is probably going to be Excel and you're probably going to be making your edits and changes into that. So no transformations can be made in that way. You can do minimal changes on this spreadsheet. So you can, there's a filter button if you'd really like to do that. Um, you can uh, you filter by uh, mathematical functions, you can filter by, and you can do some minor transformations here and there, okay? Um, another thing you can do is you can change what your variables are, and um, you can com compute a column, which is nice, okay? You can compute, but other than that, there's not much that you can do. And then uh, additionally, you can name levels for uh, nominal variables. So here's where you would put the label and here's where the value would go. And you can also then sh sh decide whether or not it's showing you the value or showing you the label. So here I, here I have it as showing me the labels. Um, even though there's a value of one and two uh, in the in the Excel file, okay. So this is this would be a one, and this would be oh they're all ones here. So that's how it's sorted. Uh, but if I go into booklet, uh, this would be <laughs> they're all sorted that way too. Uh, here we go, an MP right. So here we have this would be a two, and then up here would be a one. Don't ask me why I did that. Um, almost ten years ago. So that's the functionality that you get in JASP, which for a lot of people, if you're just throwing in a data file that doesn't need much changing, then that, that works, right? But if you want a more fully functioning, editable uh, spreadsheet in the program, then this is what Jamovi shines for. And this might indicate why the two programs are um, size differently upon download, how, how big they are in general, how big these apps are in general, because Jamovi has this additional uh, amount of information, right? So I can make changes. I can set up my spreadsheet, okay? I can call this anything else. I can say what it is, 
what the levels are, although this is subject, so why would I want to do that? Let's switch to booklet, right? So I have booklet. I can put a description here, which I think is amazing. Um, I could say this is the <laughs> booklet they saw, right? This doesn't get inputted anywhere in the in in the analysis. It's just a a captioned or a commented piece of information, which I think is amazing. You can change the measurement type. You can change what it is, right? Interdecimal text. So I could I can make it nominal, but then I can also change it to text. And then there's a little a. And so this cannot be if I did that, that cannot be used as a uh, as a as a an analysis item. Of course, I don't want to do that subject. I can actually change to um, ID and boom, we're done. Yeah. All right. Um, another thing here is I like this for nominal variables. You can say retain unused levels. So if you um, don't add any information about the levels, you can click that on and it will um, save your information. So if I have another level in here like uh, AC and DA, but they don't appear in this data set, then AC and DA, uh, which are other kinds of, of arguments, um, will appear on this list saved here, right? Uh, you can compute just like in JASP and SPSS, you can transform, which I think is crucial. You can add columns, you can delete columns, okay? Um, you can insert or append. So depending on how you like to do that, you can compute by inserting or appending, or you can transform by inserting or appending, which I think is amazing. Again, where are filters? Filters are um, essentially the same. There's a function drop down for what you'd like to do. These functions are generally speaking in the vein of SPSS, at least from my previous experience, that these are the uh, almost syntax level uh, uh, shorthands for these functions, right? And so you can do filtering and then you can add rows by inserting or appending and then you can delete rows as well. So rows would generally be cases and such. So that is the spreadsheet function. So if you want a fully contained thing, then Jamovi is the one for you, not Jasp. Okay, so let's talk about analyses. I'm just going to do a really quick t-test and show you um, what it is they look like. Okay, so I'm going to do an independent samples t-test. I'm going to use booklet as my grouping variable, and I'm going to scroll down here, and I am going to throw all four of these average uh, things in here for the t-test. And um, I will talk about the options in just a second, but I want to go ahead and set that up as well for this. So let's go to analyses. Let's go to T tests, independent samples, and let's get booklet in there for a grouping variable. You can see that um, subject is not there same as it is over there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, oh, it's down there at the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to add all four of them. Okay. All right. So here we have the results for the t-tests in each case. Um, go bigger, thank you. There we go. All right, and then here are the references um, that you can check uh, on or off in the results. Visible, hidden. So if I did, if I did hidden, they go away. Okay. So here are the basic results for independent samples t-tests. You can see that they are essentially the same. Uh, they're both students T, okay? Independent sample C, we've got the T statistic, we've got degrees of freedom, we've got P, and student T's test, and then student T test. And then here we have an issue with Levine's as a note, and then Levine's here as a note. It puts it on the P. The note goes on the P value in JASP, but the note goes on the statistic in Jamovi, right? And so if we went back to this independent samples t-test, let's bring up 
that back, we have a bunch of options. And I think the options for null, uh, null hypothesis statistical testing, NHST, are essentially the same. We can kind of just go through and, and um, play with them a little bit. But I think you'll note that there are some differences here that um, either make Jasp more appealing or make Jamovi more appealing. So, luckily, you can do, um, you can get Welch and Man Whitney U in there and it puts them in the same thing. I'll add Welch and Man Whitney U here and it'll add the, the same thing. And I'll, I'll say that the results in both auto update which is amazing. You do not have to rerun tests at all. I think this is one of the best additions to any statistical program, because what if I made an error on a missing value or I wanted to make a decision about missing values? And so I, I, I make those changes. Well, instead of having to rerun the statistics again, rerun the test again, the test that I already ran will auto update if it's active. So if it's active here and here, it will auto update, which I think is, is I think one of the best advances for this particular um, uh, kind of uh, open source R based thing. Okay. Um, now you'll, you'll, you'll see why they're, they're essentially the same, and that's because they're both based on R packages. And those R packages are essential core R packages. So independent samples t-test is a core R package. And this core package runs a simple test. And then you can add in to these things um, additional information. The other thing that I love, the other thing that I love about... Um, the these two programs is the hypothesis the hypotheses and you can choose whether or not you're gonna just gonna do a two two tail test or the other the two one tail tests for either side um assumption checks normality equality variances we get those two we can add that homogeneity test and normality again tests of normality and then Levine's test. So essentially the same there. You can also get uh, QQ plots and uh, Jamovi. Both will give you descriptives and descriptive plots. So, I mean, there's a lot we can do. Missing values, exclude cases per dependent variable or exclude cases list wise, analysis by analysis. So, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of things are, are similar there. One thing I will note, especially with the t-test is that the t-test is a little bit more robust in, uh, as far as functionality goes, robust functionality, not the test itself. Uh, it's a little bit more robust because of effect size. And we can add Cohen's D, we can add glasses as a radio button, and we can have Hedges G. In in uh, in Jamovi, we end up with um, only Cohen's D. We can get confidence intervals, but I think that's one issue that separates the two. Like, we can get G, glasses, delta, or Cohen's D, and also add in... 95% confidence intervals. We can also add in location parameters, uh, which I believe is just the mean difference. Uh, location parameters. No, oh, no, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Mean difference, and we can get confidence intervals for that. With, um, with both of them, you can choose whether or not you want a 95%. That's the default. And then you move on. Okay. So that's the results and analyses, and they're essentially similar. Descriptives, t-tests, ANOVA, regression. If this is what you're, if this is what you're teaching students, then um, essentially they're going to be the same. 
One thing um, before moving on with this particular results and test pane is that you'll note here that Jasp, um, oops, that Jasp has this little I button. It brings up help and it brings up all the information uh, about what each of these fields are, including the references, what these R packages are that do this. Um, uh, you can go into the data library and find something that will help you work through the t-test. And so this is this is great. Uh, this is wonderful. And it took somebody writing all of this. It took somebody to write all of this. And so kudos to that person who went through and wrote all of those uh, help modules. OK, um, the other thing you can do is you can rename it. And it will change the name in the title here. You can add a different test um, by duplicating it and then you can delete it. So one of the things in the results pane that I really like is um, you can rename and you can edit this and you can uh, add notes. You can copy. Oops, I don't want to do that. You can copy into a Word document uh, here in Jamovi. You have to right click to get um, any sort of screen here. All you have to do is hover over this triangle and it'll give you for each level of the uh, thing. So this this one will only be for this table, whereas the keeps dropping down here, whereas this one will be for the entire analysis um, for independent samples you have to right click and it's all or just this analysis and the only thing you can really do is copy duplicate or export duplicate does the same thing as the duplicate function in jasp okay so those are the um uh those are the ways in which they um add some functionality to the results pat uh, uh pain that you don't get in other programs like jasp uh, or, or SPSS and SAS, for example. The other thing that I will note is that um, both of these tables, these default tables, are wonderful because they are almost, almost in APA, so much better than any table that you can get generated in SPSS. Even if you choose the uh, option in SPSS where you say, I want APA style tables, I think these are better. They're sharper. Um, they have the thicker line at the bottom, which is generally useful. They have the notes already on them. Oh, and all you have to do is add them if you put them into a Word document. So I think they're amazing, right? Uh, it's just it's just the little things, you know? The last thing I'll note about uh, the output are plots. Plots. Now, plots in Jasp, I have to say, I'm sorry, they're awful. Um, they give you a quick thing. They give you a quick idea of how things are going, as you can see here. Oh, look at that. Completely equal for FSR. <laughs> uh, but... In other case, and and it's hard to, t and these I believe are confidence intervals as opposed to standard errors, um, and the scaling on the y-axis is really bad, and so you can make them bigger if you want, but that doesn't help because that doesn't change the scaling on the y-axis. Now I will say, the plots in, Jam in Jamovi are much better as far as scaling is concerned. The uh, the error bars are uh, surrounded by confidence intervals. Again, they're not standard errors as you might generally see in um, in other publications or other graphs, figures, etc. They're smaller. They're not as in your face. Okay. It does put the median on there. I'm, I don't know if that's an option or not. I hope it is. Um, and and they look a lot better. They look a lot better. Uh, I don't know if they would necessarily still be um, 
and, and opening that just opens that again, uh, clicking on them. So there's not much we can do. We can uh, group, uh, yep, group, group, analysis, copy, yeah, image. You can only copy or export it. So you can't change it, which is a bit of a bummer. So that's the plot situation in both of them. All right, so let's talk about these additional functions, these additional modules that you see here. Uh, now, Jasp and Jamovi come with base. There are base modules that you can use for the more the most common, the most common ones. OK, and if you want to add more, as you can see here, scrolling through, I have added all of them to my top pane. If you wanted to add all of these, you click the uh, button and you can uh, add the check. You can just check these and they will show up on them. They come in the base. They come in the base. They're just not generally checked just in case people don't want them up. Don't want them up here. Uh, I made another video on how I thought the distributions module is amazing. Uh, in developer mode, you can install a module by going um, to your uh, desktop and opening it. You can also and, and so you'll have to browse for that module. And then you can add it to your list here. Um, in developer mode, you can also select a developer module. So you can close that. That's all there. Okay. Jamovi, on the other hand, has this situation. So I have all of them and there are more because let me just expand this for you. Uh, the problem with Jamovi, and I hope they can add this into as a quick feature on the next one, is an ability to, to scroll. So you can see here that I can just use my mouse to scroll back and forth. Uh, I would like that for this so I don't have to expand this to the whole window. Um, but there's a modules button here and here you can add in the Jamovi library and or and or manage the installed. And so I have I installed all of them just because why not? Right. I have the space for it. I have the processing power for it. So why not? So there are other ones that you can install that are available like Esky effect sizes and confidence intervals for R and Jamovi. Apparently I missed that. So let's go ahead and install it. So what it does is it installs it into your Jamovi. It's essentially an R package and you can find out more there. And now it's installed and it's in my installed. You can also sideload modules to work with Jamovi, which I think is amazing. Um, so as so not to bog down, uh, not to bog down Jamovi, but in but use Jamovi's functionality and this uh, other modules functionality. And so there's a ton. And these are authored by other developers, other scientists. They are probably packages that are available for R already that you can use in like RStudio or R R directly if you know if, if you're a fan of that um, and so you can see here the survey MV survey plots is from Ravi Selker and um, great summary plots for your survey data and it's 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 essentially an R package okay or uh, major meta-analysis for Jamovi an interface for Jamovi and the R package metaphor okay by W Kyle Hamilton Essentially, that's what they are. Now, there are more packages that are immediately available for Jamovi than there are for Jasp. OK, so I want you to, to note that. Um, and so you can they and once you install a module over here, it'll show up on yours. And when it's new, it will flash blue like this Esky. So that's that ESCII one, the effect size confidence interval um, package. And, and then and so this essentially goes here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this back so it's there. And that's what I said here. I can't scroll, so I can't go and add modules because I'm at the end of the window, which is a bit of a bummer, just a bit of a bummer. 
One of the other things that I wanted to talk about is R, as I mentioned. So they both have R code underneath them in addition to the GUI code, etc. Uh, and so for each of these tests, like the t-test that I just did, or the t-test that I did over here, they are based on R. And um, as I noted here, R packages, stats, car, and MBES are the, the three packages that are useful or that are used in any and all of these options to create this output here. Okay, to create this output here. Um, now with with uh, Jamovi, you don't get that, but you can operate in syntax mode. So the the difference between the two programs is kind of big difference as far as R is concerned. So what if I am using Jamovi as a gateway for learning R or Jazz as a gateway for learning R, which is what these two programs are built on? JASP makes it a little bit more difficult for you to get the syntax. Essentially, it doesn't give you the syntax for most of the base level tests. But what you can do in Jamovi is click on the vertical three dots for the preferences and go into syntax mode. OK, so what it will do is it will get rid of pretty much everything that gives it a, a nice sheen and give you output that looks like our output. So things that aren't code for tests are have a uh, pound sign or a hashtag in front of them to recognize that they are commented and they should not be interpreted as code. But it will give you, oops, keep doing that. It will give you the code that you need to run this test in in R, in R Studio, for example, as long as you enter the data as a data table and you want to name it as anything that's that's important. So data equals data. You can change that um, T test uh, and then you add in all of these different options, which R will tell you you can add. And so I want Welch's and man's. And so that equals true. That equals true. You could say false. And then it won't give you the output. But then you get the CI effect size, which is um, Cohen's D by default. And then all of the other things, and it will give you the plots, etc. And so all of these tables will then revert to what they kind of look like in, in R. Okay, so I think syntax mode is super great if you want to use Jamovi as a means to learn R or teach your students R or show them this is this is how statistical programs are built and even though you might use a GUI to point and click your analyses it's helpful to learn the the underneath under the hood kind of stuff right so and plots are Plots aren't changed, although they are commented out. So you, these plots would appear one at a time if you did them in in like our studio, for example. Um, then there's flex. Uh, I didn't do anything with flex plot. That's why it's not doing anything. But yeah, syntax mode is amazing for this. Okay, and I can uncheck it, and it will go back to normal. I also enjoy the fact that um, it auto updates. Like you don't have to open and close it. Just like the results do when you change something for each test. All right. The last thing I want to note for this is Bayesian functionality. I've been talking about classical tests or frequentist tests for this entire video. And uh, I do want to uh, bring up the fact that uh, JASP was built with Bayesians in mind. And so if I go to t-tests, you see the Bayesians here. This comes with the program. This is already this is already available when you start up Jazz for the first time. If you are not a Bayesian, Jamovi might be the case. Now you can see here that I have the, the Bayesian um, thing underneath, just like I did for t-tests over here, right? 
But I had to add this. I had to add the Bayesian package. Instead of making a module in the top pane here, it just adds it to the module that it fits with. So if it's a Bayesian and t-test analysis, then it will go into t-test, which is perfect for this module, right? Um, and you can see here that it's the JSQ, the JSQ module or package that was installed. Um, you can uninstall it. You can um, not ever install it. If you're not a Bayesian scientist or you don't use Bayesian analyses, then there it goes. That's it. You can use it or you cannot use it. And so JASP was built with Bayesians in mind. That's, I mean, SPSS and SAS don't really include Bayesian statistics uh, tests in their base functionalities. And so Bayesians really needed something to use. And so I'm not a Bayesian. I'm not going to show you how to do those because I have no idea how to do them. But I would imagine they are very similar. So if I did a Bayesian over here and a Bayesian over here, you can see that they are very similar in what they uh what options they're looking for i would imagine that these are almost the same right so we have hypotheses we have base factor although you can do log base factor over here um student or man whitney you, you can get your descriptives uh prior i mean these seemingly are the same uh, because they come from the same place I don't know the, the history on that one. I'm just letting you know that this is built in on day one, whereas you need to add this. Not a big deal. You just need to add it. One last piece about the analyses that you um, that you might want that might help you choose which program you want because the, sim the functions are similar. If you go here to the hamburger menu on both and you save uh, wherever you go, the OSF is also linked with JAS, which I think is pretty cool. But if you go to and you save it as a, a .jasp file or to Jamovi as a Jamovi file, you will you will not have to ever change anything about what you've saved because it's all synced and when you open it again even if you've made some major changes to your data it will redo the analyses you won't have to enter in the analyses anymore it kind of, similar to using syntax mode in spss if you just run the syntax if you just save the syntax and you can just run it on any data file that has the same structure same thing goes with the the way that you can save analyses in JASP and Jamovi. Um, and you can sync data, you can export data. I mean, the the ways that you can that you can play with all of this and make it um, go from computer to computer to computer. One way that I think about this in, in my teaching, I use JASP. And one way I think about this is if a student of mine has their data in JASP and they're having trouble, instead of having to, um, instead of having to like get all of their data files and then open it up in JASP and everything is that, all they have to do is save their data in a JSA, a JASP file email that to me i can open that up on my computer in my office or at home and i can explore their data set and i can then whatever changes that i make i can then save as a jasp send it back to them they open it it's exactly as how i just made the changes and they can go oh okay so that's what the analysis is supposed to look like you know it, it's a great teaching tool for both of these programs and i think Perhaps it's underutilized, and I'm I'm planning to use this feature more. Okay, so which one should you download? Which one should you use, either for your personal statistics or for your teaching statistics? 
it's a really hard choice and hopefully this video has helped you a little bit make that choice but if not um here are some of my thoughts so jasp i'll talk about jasp first so jasp is lightweight it's got bayesian functioning built in as i just mentioned um it's nice if you just want a lightweight program to run in the background while you do most of your data transformation and data um, cleaning and uh, all of that stuff in Excel. If you already do that in Excel, then JASP really is just an extension of, of, uh, of Excel. And it's free. It's a free extension of Excel. You had to pay for Excel maybe for, you know, Microsoft subscription. And you just want an extension to be able to do some fancier statistics that Excel can't do. I think JASP does that. If you're a Bayesian scientist and you use Excel, then it's a great additional arm of Excel. Okay. Uh, online, the community is constantly adding new features. Uh, JASP even says, like, make sure that you're constantly checking for new updates because um, we're adding new features all the time. They have an active uh, GitHub uh, forum where people can suggest changes and, and talk about uh, various functionalities. It's a it's a full uh, it's a it's a full community. Um, there are videos, including mine, for how to do things. There are GIFs, which are great for just quickly going, okay, what's the keystroke pattern? What's the click pattern for this, that, and the other thing? And so it's a, it's, it's a great little program. I would consider it an extension of Excel uh, or a move away from SPSS if you are a Bayesian scientist. Um, or if you're a frequentist like me who just wanted a, an open source lightweight avenue, let's say, into a R. Now, Jamovi, on the other hand, um, is a more comprehensive multifunction program. I would consider it an option for someone who is looking to replace SPSS in their teaching and in their own research. I would also argue that it is an option for starting a foray into R. If you ultimately want to just use R, then I think Jamovi is a good window into that. There are also a ton of resources available for Jamovi. There is a, even a statistics textbook, an undergraduate statistics textbook on using Jamovi in your undergraduate statistics classes. There are videos, like I said at the top of this video, I plan to do a video tutorial series on that. In any case, these two programs are formidable. They are useful and they are constantly being updated, added to, played with, uh, shared free and open source i have to say is is i i would say the biggest selling point for either of these so if you can't decide which one at least at least you you know that when you do you are saying uh i want to make this accessible to both myself my students my other my fellow researchers and i just want to you know i just want to have all of my statistics in one place and I think both of them can help you do that. Thanks for watching this comparison video. I really appreciate it. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, any feedback, please leave those in the comments down below. Uh, I am open to that. Um, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching.